Before you run your very first ad in Google AdWords, it's absolutely critical that you set up conversion tracking inside of Google AdWords. Now, you're already setting up conversion tracking inside of Google Analytics, but it's a second layer of data that will enable you to kind of make sure everything that's going on is proper. And of course, by setting it up inside AdWords, we can do some controls that only AdWords can do. So you'll typically have three layers of conversion data. You're gonna have Google Analytics data for conversions on the page level and the events and things that you set up within Google Analytics, which you should do, and I've already showed you in previous modules. Now, for Google AdWords, you're gonna set up, and I'm gonna show you how to do that right now, conversion tracking specific to Google AdWords. So the data, conversion numbers, and everything else, and you know those results will show up inside of Google AdWords, as well as its reports. So that's very important. Ultimately, you'll also have another layer, the real layer of conversion data, inside whatever shopping cart system you use, not only to track opt-ins, but also to, of course, track sales and actual sales that went through based on your merchant account data and everything else and money that was actually collected. But let's set up conversion tracking in AdWords because it's absolutely critical for us to manage whatever we do inside of Google AdWords. So this is the dummy account I set up. Don't pay any attention to this data. It doesn't mean anything. But at the very top of the menu, this is what I want you to see. The far right option says Tools. So if we go and click Tools, we'll see the drop down menu. Pick the second one that says Conversions. Now, when we go to this area of Google AdWords, this is how we can add conversions. You're gonna wanna add a bunch of different conversions every time you do things separately and to track whatever it is that you're trying to track. So click on the red button that says conversion. Now we'll have a bunch of options here. Website, app, phone calls, import. Now for our purposes, we're just gonna work with the first one, which for most digital marketing purposes, solves 90 something percent of our tracking you know, solutions. So if you're gonna be doing app downloads or you're gonna track phone calls for your business, or if you have some kind of offline conversion with your business where you're driving you know, traffic to a site and then sales may happen offline with you know, phone, a phone room or a follow-up salesperson or some other type of a process for you to make money in your business, then you can use other forms of tracking. But for almost everything that most marketers use, we can do it with just website tracking. So we click this first one here, website, and now we see a bunch of different options. So the first thing is to pick a name it says that you'll easily recognize in your reports. Now this is critical because as I talked about before, how you set up conversion tracking, naming things, and everything else is how you're gonna be able to manage AdWords once it starts getting complicated and it starts you know, really adding up with a lot of volume. A lot of ad groups, a lot of ads, a lot of keywords, a lot of campaigns. Depending on how you name things, it's very critical because that's how you can read your reports. So it says to pick a name for whatever conversion you're setting up. So let's say we're gonna track opt-ins. Now, for us to set up campaigns to send to a site or landing page, of course, to track opt-in, let's say we're gonna get people to opt-in for like a free video series, and we're gonna be giving them, you know, just getting them to give us our, give their email address. So we wanna pick a name that we'll recognize in reports. Now, if we go back to the naming convention that I shared with you that I like to use, I recommend if you are gonna go that route, the first thing you put for your conversion name is the type of goal that it is. Remember I told you I have the two areas where it's either OPT for opt-in, or you can remember I said BUY if it's just to drive a sale. So typically I would put that first here, and then I would combine it with the other kind of naming thing that I used for whatever the you know sales page was or the identifier for a certain video sales letter page or for the opt-in page. So if I was going to do opt-ins for a video series and it was going to be like the third version of that page or something different about that, then I would type in opt-vid3 and that's very similar to the same naming convention I used when I showed you how I name campaigns. So I recommend you do something similar here. And then I would space from that, and then I actually describe it. So I'd say, let's say, opt-in for uh, grow, uh, grow tricks, let's say. So let's say I was giving away a video series. We'll stick with our gardening example, and it's on different tricks for, you know, how to get the best growth out of your garden. And let's just say I call it grow tricks. So it's saying it's an opt-in. It's the third version or the third thing I'm tracking related to, you know, a page where I'm getting people to opt-in for a video series uh, on grow tricks. So you can either just type in opt-in for grow tricks 
or you can type in opt-in for grow tricks video series it doesn't matter the descriptive part is just for you but in tracking adwords campaigns because it can get so complicated the more detailed you are in describing what it is you're up to the better because as you start driving these conversions whatever this name is will keep showing up in your reports and that's fine but in order for you to figure out what the heck it is you want to really describe it so if you use some kind of code in the beginning that's related to how you kind of track campaigns and other things all you have to look at is the first part so we see opt dash vid3 so we'll know just looking at it at a glance it's an opt-in for a video series and it, maybe it's the third generation or third version of the landing page that we're using to get people to opt in but i recommend you use this you can actually name this anything you want you can just say opt-in for my email newsletter but for us and for me trying to get you to do things on a very scientific and disciplined level i think you should use detailed monikers detailed naming conventions so you'll really be able to test multiple landing pages do split tests and really hone in and improve your business and really fine tune things because that's what it's all about if you want to make the max amount of money and of course that's what i want for you and your business so after you name it you click done and then the next thing you see is value enter how much each conversion is worth to your business now if this is just an opt-in and by the way if you're tracking a sale so let's say your goal to run an adwords campaign is to run traffic directly to a sales page where you're trying to sell something or directly to a site where you're selling a product or whether you're selling coaching service it doesn't matter what you're selling but if you were to drive traffic directly to a page where your goal is to make a sale and not just build a lead or get an opt-in then of course going back a second for this name thing you would want to name this like buy dash and then whatever the version of maybe that page is uh, i recommend doing something like that but either way you'd say a sale for and then you would describe what is they're buying you know camping gear whatever it just depends on your type of business and what you're tracking but so you would name that a sale now for value enter how much each conversion is worth if it's just an opt-in put don't assign a value because you don't really have a specific value for each opt-in because all the different opt-ins are going to end up becoming a different value based on how they convert into sales in your business or or however else you monetize the lead later there will be different conversion rates for each lead they all won't be worth the same all leads aren't worth the same some will buy some won't so if you're just building an opt-in or just building a lead in this case uh, don't assign a value obviously uh, if you're building leads that you resell to other businesses and every lead you collect you sell for 20 bucks well then if it was a lead you could call it a lead in the name part and you could assign a value of 20 dollars but to keep things simple let's just keep things divided amongst opt-ins as well as sales so for opt-ins don't assign a value however for sales I recommend you do assign a value and you put the profit amount that you make from each sale not the gross revenue but how much profit you'd make for each one of those sales that you're tracking and of course you want to send traffic to specific products i don't recommend that you send google adwords traffic to a catalog site that has 10 different things for sale isolate things down to the keyword level because each keyword is looking for a specific product or solution send them to a singular landing page that sells one product just focus on one product uh, because you'll find just like the 80 20 rule you'll get most of your sales will happen for only a small amount of your products if you do have a bunch of different products but always try to get things singular down to uh, a certain keyword with its intention down to its ad that matches and ultimately of course the landing page that goes with the keyword we're going to talk more about how all that comes together with quality score why click-through rate is so key how these conversion rates come into effect so if you're building opt-ins here for value click don't assign a value if you are doing something for sale i recommend that you put each time it happens the conversion action has the same value and put the profit amount so if you're selling something for $100 that actually has a cost for you to fulfill it of 50, put in 50 as the value so you're tracking it as, as far as profit. So the other option is the value of this conversion action may vary, for instance, by purchase price. Don't worry about that. I would just use the other one each time it happens and put in the value. But for now, we're doing an opt-in example, so we put don't assign a value. Now the next thing we see is count. Now this can get a bit confusing. We have two options. We can count um, every time it happens 
or we can put it at just one. So here's the little problem with AdWords, and this is why we wanna have multiple layers of conversion tracking that we can back everything up to with Google, Google, Google Analytics data we can look at as well as our shopping cart data. If we do every, uh, track every conversion, then if an opt-in person clicks on this ad and they go and opt into that form three times, it's gonna track it as three different conversions. If, they, if you set it to one, then if they did three different conversions, um, it will only count it as one conversion. Now that can be a problem though, if you're tracking sales and one customer clicks on the ad and they actually buys, you know, buys more than once. So it ends up tracking you know, uh, multiple sales. Typically, most opt-ins won't opt in a bunch of times. They do sometimes and it will mess up your conversion data. That's why we look at also the shopping cart records to eliminate duplicates when we track it back to the ad source and things to really figure out uh, what's what. Uh, but I recommend that you keep this on every, just so you're tracking all activity. And then of course, you can go and look at your other layers of data uh, to, to really see what's happening. I usually like to have more data rather than less data. And if you tell AdWords to only track it one time per ad, then if other things are occurring, it's not gonna track it for you uh, in that conversion. So it's a give and take. One, if you track every, it, it, it may kind of overinflate some of the data if you're getting people to you know, opt in more than once or, or, or they complete an order more than once if it was a duplicate order. But if you only do tracking one, it may not track other actions that you wanna know about in relation to the value of a keyword campaign. So I recommend at least in the beginning, you put it on every, if you're finding you're getting a lot of duplicate data, then you may wanna test putting it to one and see, seeing if it helps you. So we'll keep it on every. The next thing it says conversion windows. Now this really gets complicated. So we can track the conversions we run from the campaigns for clicks. Uh, we can say only track it for the first 30 days or do it on a custom level, do one week, do 90 days. Uh, and also on an impression basis when we run a display network. I recommend you just leave it alone on 30 days. Typically for most of the things we do in our business, we run in 30 day cycles. We wanna be able to look at our reports, make decisions based on conversions and values that happen within a month. Uh, that's why we're gonna do the VV30 when I talked about the tracking formulas. We wanna see what a visitor is worth within that first 30 days. Now certainly, uh, if we have a business like a membership site where the average customer stays multiple months and we get value over multiple months or the average customer buys more than one thing, we're ultimately gonna have a different value for what each customer's worth. That's a whole different argument. But for tracking purposes, uh, typically, let's just track within the first 30 days. Otherwise, if we track within 90 days, we're going to get people that may have you know, bookmarked our site and they come back and opt in in two months from now. And we really want to make decisions based on 30 days worth of activity. Like I said, we'll have other layers of conversion data with analytics and of course our shopping cart, which is the most important. And we can always look at that data to find end number results and everything else. But for AdWords, I recommend 30 days. Now you can pick a category, uh, what this is. If it's a purchase or sale, put it on purchase, purchase or sale. If it's a sign up, this can be opt in or lead. You can also put that opt in. I put my opt ins. I call them sign ups. Uh, some people call getting any information at all from a user. If they don't buy, it's a lead. It just depends on your business. Uh, or you can just do as a view of a key page where if you're sending people to like a blog post or something and maybe certain things don't happen there, you're not actually, uh, well you care, but you, you wanna track if they just went to the page. Um, especially let's say if you send them to a landing page and then you link to another page and you wanna track how many people click through to that other page, this is where you could do like view of, an, of a key page where they went to see something else. Uh, or you could call the landing page the thing itself. It'll be the same as your click numbers, but you, you're able to track that as a conversion. So for now, I'll put it as sign up. And then it says include in conversions. So we wanna click just yes for this and leave it on that. You can say no, and the reason why is under the conversion column in AdWords, sometimes there may be things like, 
let's say if they go to visit another page, like it was under that category option at the bottom, we don't wanna track that as an actual conversion because it's not an opt-in or it's not a sale, which is what we care about more. Well then for that specific one, you may wanna say no. You don't want conversions to show up, but as a default, leave it on yes. So then you just click save and continue. And then it's gonna give us the convert the uh, tracking code. So we'd highlight this and we'd put this uh, at the top of the page uh, the for, uh, you know, that we're tracking this conversion on. So we go to actually the landing page. That's an opt-in page, uh, ultimately for this uh, Grow Tricks video series. Actually, we put this, I'm sorry, on the thank you page because that's what's gonna count the conversion is when they actually uh, have opted in. So we'd put this on the thank you page. Um, so that's that. Uh, in the next lesson, I'm gonna show you real quick how we would add this to Google Tag Manager so we don't have to mess with putting it on the page, which in the very first module I talked about setting up your foundation. I talked about recommending using Google Tag Manager. I showed you how to do that. So I'm gonna show you how Google AdWords has a component already built into Google Tag Manager. And so when you start setting up all these conversions, so much more convenient to go into Google Tag Manager and just add this tag within Google Tag Manager and then click update and it automatically updates for the pages because you have the Google Tag Manager code on all your web pages in the top of all your headers like I suggested you set things up so it's much easier. But this is how you set up conversion tracking. Every single time you're gonna track something different, a different landing page for opt-ins, any type of different goal, any type of different thing for sale, but also all the different uh, sales pages you know, if you're testing different pages, you always wanna come in here and set up a new conversion for it so you can see it in your reports. Then after you click done, you'll see conversion actions and it shows you all the ones that you currently have set up. So we see this one we just created, the opt-in vid three, opt-in for Grow Tricks video series. It says it's a website, it's a sign-up type. Uh, it's unverified so far because we haven't actually added the tag to our page yet and then had it loaded. Once it loads once, then Google can contact the server and you know it sees that it's active and then that becomes verified uh, and then you're up and running. But if you go under tools and conversions, this is where you see your list of conversions. This is very, very important because all the things that you're gonna track throughout using AdWords, you're gonna to wanna to set up separate conversions for those things right here in this area. And whichever ones you've set up, this is where uh, you'll see them. And of course, you can manage them. Now, if you set up ones that you no longer are going to use, leave them in this list anyways. You never wanna delete any kind of data, which you'll hear me say. Always leave it uh, inside AdWords uh, and just, just don't use it anymore. You can pause it or just stop it or you know if it's a campaign ad group, whatever it is, or if you're no longer gonna use a conversion, uh, you can just not use it. But don't ever delete stuff unless you make a typo, of course. But if you ever use something and get data at all, even if it didn't work out and it was at a huge loss or you know just a big failure for a campaign, you always wanna store all your data, even the losing campaigns and tests uh, inside your account. Google actually keeps that historical uh, kind of value for your account based on how things are going. And I think it actually looks good to them that you actually have things that you tested that didn't work that you're no longer active with rather than just a bunch of active campaigns uh, because that's not how real marketers work. So we'll talk more about that a little bit. But anyways, um, just uh, you'll find all your list of things here that you're tracking and if all else fails or, or whenever in doubt, I should say, always set up a new conversion tracker uh, if you're gonna track something rather than try to rely on a same tracker for something else. If you're doing any kind of testing or anything else and you're wondering, hey, should I use the same uh, kind of conversion element that I set up before or should I set up a whole new one? If in doubt, more data is better than less data and more tracking is better than less tracking. So just set up a new conversion, it's very simple. Tools and then conversions, you go through that quick set of options and you click done and it adds it.